Hello everybody. Um, I work here in Vasa, so this is a bit focused in this area, but um, uh, all the data that I have here is about the entire Gulf of Motnia, which is also the area of Smart Sea project. So uh, it's about coastal fisheries and fish production, so it's kind of an overall view of what's happening at the moment, not, not so much about the future. And the main species for the fishery in, in the Gulf of Botnia is, is the herring, Baltic herring, which makes about 93,000 tonnes annually, which is about 73% of total catch in Finland. So, so the herring is the most important species. And at, as a side catch, there's also some f fishery for sprat, which is coming uh, with trolls that are used for herring. But the interesting, actually, interesting thing actually which we have in fishery is the small scale uh, coastal fishery. Which is shown here in the um, here. Oops, sorry. This here here in the uh, graph on the right side. Uh, so I will focus on on main species, which are whitefish and birds. Then we have also other species like uh, smelt, which is a uh, kuore, which is important in especially in springtime. But these two whitefish and birds are the uh, socially and economic, economically perhaps one of the most important species in, in small-scale coastal fishery, both in commercial fishery and also in recreational fishery. And, and in the Gulf of Botnia, birds makes 77% uh, of, of the total catch in Finland and, and whitefish 81% of total catch in Finland. So actually when you go to fish market, for example in Helsinki, you probably get fish from Gulf of Botnia area, not so much from Gulf of Finland. Uh, the recreational fishing is also important. In the Gulf of Botnia area, there's about 190,000 recreational fishermen in 2016. And most popular fishing method methods are gillnets, traps, which, which means actually katiska. Uh, it's a small trap. Ice fishing and, and uh, fishing with rod and line. <coughs> and the most common species in catches were the birds, whitefish and roach, bream, lahna even pike and sea trout uh, and herring, porpoise, eyed and salmon. So it's quite a much fo focused on these two species, which are birds and whitefish, even if you look at the tons that are caught annually. And the commercial catches of birds and whitefish, they have been uh, changing uh, quite a lot. This time series is from 1980. It's uh, about the time, time when I was born, actually one year even before to 2017, and, and the catches have uh, changed uh, quite a lot. Um, since 1990s, the catches of whitefish in, in Botnian Sea, here in Orange, have decreased strongly, and at the same time, these catches here in, of the catches of birds have increased quite strongly. And in the Botnian Bay area, the whitefish catches have also decreased, but the change has not been as big as in the Botnia Sea area. And uh, as it's mo more northern area, and, and birds like uh, more like warm water areas, the bird catches in the Botnian Bay are of minor importance. So most of the birds actually is from, from in the Finnish coastal area is at the moment coming from the Quark area. So close to close from clo sea areas close to this Vasa region, actually. And what has happened to catch days in the Gulf of Botnia? Actually, uh, they have also decreased, decreased quite a lot. This, this graph shows how many catch days for gillnets and traps have been used both in Botnian Sea, here in Orange, and Botnian Bay, the blue one. And traps are the uh, narrow lines here, and this all is the catch with gillnets. So you can see that the gillnets are the main method to catch fish in commercial fishing. And th this all means that uh, actually the catches have improved if you think about the number of fishermen, so less fishermen get more fish. But it's not so uh, simply, because there are lots of things that actually disturb the fishing at the moment. But the main question actually when you fish is that is there a fish and where are the fish from? So when we are thinking about fish stocks that are from nature, natural born, have an origin in nature, we have to know the reproduction areas. And for pet birds, for example, the estuaries and rivers and even the shallow bays are the most important 
places for egg production. These are the houses for small fish and, and also the places where the fish spawn. And hard bottom reefs and islets in, in places that are more like um, cars or hearths are important, for example, for species like sea spawning whitefish and, and also for herring. And, and the one way that human uses to produce fish on the water is hatchery and stocking, and it's important for migratory whitefish and also for sea trout. Most of these in the Gulf of Botnia are, are coming from hatcheries. So we know now that the innermost archipelago locations are important for warm water species, species like birds, and, and a bit more tolerant species use uh, hard bottom areas, which are often also a bit more colder. And the scale of reproduction is also important to know. We know that uh, the birds is spawning in spring when the ice has left and the water temperatures rise up to about 10 degrees Celsius. And they set up the extremes in the shallowest places in the shore or a depth of a few meters. Usually the scale is about some tens of meters where the spawning area is located. And then we have a nursery area where the small fish are located. Here you see, we are actually at the moment somewhere here, so this nursery area, which is one of the best in, in the Finnish coastal area, is located very, very close to us. And, and from nursery area, the fish are going to feeding area, which is in case of birds about 30 kilometers. And for white fish, it can be up to 600 kilometers. So actually, the white fish from River Tornio are coming south to Oland Island, Ahvenanmaa, to feed. And uh, based on earlier projects, we know that uh, the reproduction of many coastal species are located in the innermost archipelago. We have maps that locate the most or most productive uh, reproduction habitats, and you can look those at, at web at this address, Velmu site. So Google uh, Kalaja Lisääntymisalueet Velmu, so you will find these maps. And what is actually affecting to this fish and fisheries is that everything that is happening in the drainage, drainage areas of rivers, because everything what happens here, up in here comes down to the estuaries and also to the coastal areas. Because we are talking about the coastal species, so the innermost coastal areas are also most important for those, as the uh, states of reproduction is the sens most sensitive for environmental stressors. And what kind of stressors we have? They are like agriculture, forestry, uh, ditching, industries, People, cities, civic frustrator, and even outside in the sea, boats, boating roads, houses, maybe future in future also windmills, uh, all kind of things that um, are changing the natural habitat and also the shoreline. And now we even have uh, some predators like cormorants and seals that cause some problems for fishery. So in future, what we should new, do and maybe also do in smart sea project, pro, smart sea project product some made material for this, is to focus on restoration or reproduction areas, both in coastal areas, estuaries and rivers. Keep up the uh, fish stockings in areas where we don't really have hope for reproductions. This means like dammed rivers that have dams and so on. And then we should also identify uh, critical fishing areas for fish migration and maybe do some kind of network of fishery products that protection areas and also manage the trinity of uh, seals, cormorants and man who, is, who has the right to eat the fish. And considering about the climate change, we should know also what kind of changes, temperature, coastal eutrophication and even the salinity changes will do for the fish communities. Thank you. Thank you, Lottie.